what is up humanoid nation we're back with some courtroom videos last one i reacted to was like this crazy lady saying that jesus will represent her as her lawyer did not go well so today's video is by courtroom top seven reactions of innocent comment to convicts set free it's a shame though like some people do go to jail even though they're innocent and then they found out later that they were innocent all along and they it's a tough thing, like, but that's the system. It's kind of broken, but we're not going to get into that. All right, so without further ado, let's do this. This is John Bunn. He spent 27 years wrongfully convicted of murder. 27 years. And I have always been an innocent man. While living in Brooklyn, New York, Bunn was only 14 years. Also, let's just say black people get the shit end of the yellow stick because yeah black people latino people middle eastern they all get the shit end deal like i'm not gonna get into it just you know it's a thing that happens with racism and police and arresting black people all the time especially this kid who's 14 and in jail for 27 years years old when he was arrested by NYPD detective Louis Scarcella. Bunn later spent 16 years behind bars and then 11 years out on parole where he still fought to prove his innocence. Then finally his conviction was overturned based on the wrongdoing of detective Scarcella and the fact that there wasn't even probable cause to arrest him. Was that a probable cause but yet they find a way. That's how it is. Also, they can manipulate you, you into saying words to say that you did it. So, the interrogation room is very, very crooked. Like, don't ever talk to the cops. I'm no lawyer, but even I know, like, don't say anything until your lawyer gets there. Just keep your mouth shut. But that's what police do. They try to make you speak until someone shows up. Because, yeah, some of the time you, they think you know you don't know your rights and all that, but. There's a reason why you say you have the right to remain silent. Wait until your lawyer shows up or a public defender. If you can't afford a lawyer, they can give you a public defender. Public defender? Sorry about that. On in the first place. I want y'all to know that y'all convicted and had a wrong man in prison. And after 27 years of fighting to clear his name, he is finally exonerated. I want to thank you, Your Honor, because... In the 27 years, I've been fighting for my life. But before he leaves the courtroom, he has a moment with the judge. <laughs> Bun later filed a lawsuit against the city of New York and Detective Scarcella. See, here's the thing. If, like, a detective has, it, has a hard-on for you, he would do anything to get these charges to stick, even though he didn't do anything wrong. Like, ah, uh, he's a kid. He's black. This is, like, what? I'm guessing the 70s, 80s, it, yeah. Racism is a hell of a thing, man. This is now. I'm not saying all cops are racist. Certain ones, just certain ones. David Ranta. He spent 22 years behind bars for a murder he did not commit in Brooklyn, New York. Ranta was arrested by Detective Louis Garcella. Hey, yes, this the same guy. This guy has okay, all right. In Brooklyn, New York, Ranta was arrested by Detective Louis Scarcella. Yes, this is another wrongful conviction that's connected to Scarcella. Ranta was put in a police lineup run by Scarcella and was identified as the shooter. But decades later, reportedly, the key witness revealed that the detective had provided him with a description of whom to pick in the line. Like I said, if the detective has a hard on for you, they would do anything, like even coerce. A witness say, no, 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 that's not him. It is what he looks like. Sure, he's a white man, but policeman during that time. I already said it before. I'm not saying it again. Line up. There was no physical evidence linking Ranta to the killing, and the evidence presented to the jury was allegedly fabricated. Ranta was then convicted and sentenced to 37 and a God half years damn. to life Also, 37? But after spending over two decades in prison, the former witnesses admitted that they were pressured into testifying against Ranta. And now, this is the moment his conviction gets thrown out. 
Mr. Brand, to, to say that I'm sorry for what you have endured would be an understatement. 37 years, and man. Grossly inadequate, but I say it to you anyway. You've the defendant's lost motion to vacate it. the judgment of conviction Jeez. is granted. 37 years in jail, comes out as an old man. Good for him, but he still was in jail for 37 years for something he didn't do. And getting all those years back, you're not going to get it back. After his handcuffs were removed, he hugged his family. With all he owned thrown over his back, Thank you all. Thank you. he walks out a free man. After his release, he reportedly received $2 million from the state and a $6.4 million settlement from the city of New York. This is Susan Mellon. She was sentenced to life in prison without parole based on an untruthful testimony. She was 42 years old when she was arrested in Los Angeles, California at a McDonald's while taking her daughter to get a Happy Meal. But that was the last time she would see her child for seven years as she was charged for the murder of an ex-boyfriend. You are under arrest now for murder. <laughs> Melons. If we gotta stop, like, I know, like, seriously, we gotta stop talking and interrogation. Got to stop talking until your lawyer or public defender shows up. Because anything you say will be used against you. And the cops are very manipulative when it comes to wanting to get a person. If it's either black, white, anybody. They, they're set on doing something. Conviction was based solely on an informant who claimed that Mellon had confessed the killing to her. She was in prison for a total of 17 years Damn. until the informant was proven to be a pathological liar and an unreliable witness. He was a pathological liar, so no one noticed that back then. So unreliable, 17 years, wow, that's shit. And now, this is the moment that Mellon's case is finally overturned. The judgment is vacated, the conviction is overturned, and as to Miss Mellon, the case is dismissed. From tears in one moment to jumping in joy the next. When released, Mellon took her daughter to McDonald's to deliver that long-awaited Happy Meal. The state of California... I'm sorry, that's kind of funny. He's like, what's the first thing you're going to do? I'm taking my daughter to McDonald's. We, she, I haven't given her that burger she wanted from 17 years ago. I'm sorry, that's kind of funny. California awarded Mellon $597,000 in compensation and reportedly the Los Angeles City Council agreed to pay $12 million to Susan Mellon. This is Luis Vargas. He was sentenced to 55 years to Damn. life for crimes he did not commit. Vargas was 29, living in Los Angeles, California, when he was charged with three sexual assaults. Based on the similar descriptions of these crimes, police concluded that it was the same person that committed all three attacks. Vargas was later convicted on all counts, and he spent a total of 16 years in prison until the California Innocence Project tested DNA on the remaining physical evidence and clothing from one of the victims. And it was not a match. Proving that That's the thing about that. DNA testing was not a thing during 80s. When did it start around 90, mid, late 90s? DNA testing? I'm not sure. But if 80s was a war zone, man. If you get convicted of something like this, like your fucking life is over. Especially if you're Latino during that time, anybody could say, oh, this Latino guy did this and like there's no DNA testing. So off to jail you go. It's like, good luck with that. Years later, there's DNA testing and find out you're innocent. That Vargas did not commit these crimes. He is in fact innocent because the evidence will show that it undermines the prosecution's case. Vargas sat silently when he was exonerated from all crimes. Vargas only had one simple wish from his mother for when he would become a free man. Please buy me a big hamburger and we eat it together. <laughs> Reportedly, um, I would say the same thing. I've never been in jail, but from those prison documentaries, and especially with um, Louis Ferro when he goes into jail and like you see him eating the sh food there, it's utterly disgusting. Like, I don't know how you can eat all that stuff, but that's jail, man. They just do stuff. 
after Vargas was exonerated, he received $886,000 in state compensation. For 55 years? This is Daniel Villegas. Villegas. He spent 18 Another years leader. in prison for a double homicide he never committed. In El Paso, Texas, Villegas was arrested at 16, Ew. where an El Paso detective reportedly threatened him with beatings and the death penalty if he did not commit. See, that's what happens. You're 16 years old. Cop comes up to you, threatens you. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure there was no body cam or, yeah. I was like, I'll beat the f you the fucking death, and if you don't confess, because like, why not? And of course, at sixteen, you're gonna say, yeah, I did it, because you have, you don't want to get your ass kicked and all that, or even worse, get the whole goon squad to get out, go after you. Confess, and the teenage Viegas signed a confession that was prepared by the detectives. The worst. He tried to withdraw his confession Under a few duress. hours after, but by then it was too late. He was charged with two counts of capital murder. With the false confession being the only piece of evidence, the jury was unable to. This was, when was this? Oh God damn it! Agree on with the false. For 1993. Okay. All right, 1993. Confession being the only piece of evidence, the jury was unable to agree on a verdict. Viegas had a retrial, and the jury returned a guilty verdict, and he was given a life sentence. After spending 18 years in prison, the verdict was thrown out, and Viegas remained out on bond where he got married and started a family. But now, we're in the third trial. If the defendant will please a third trial. This is the moment that Viegas will find out if he'll go home with his family or be sent back to prison to serve his life sentence. The state of Texas versus Daniel Viegas. Verdict form B. We, the jury, find the defendant Daniel Viegas not guilty of. Let's go, my boy! Viegas is now a free man. You are no longer under any conditions. You are free to leave. Thank you. Reportedly, Viegas has filed a lawsuit against the city. Good for of him. He should. He should. Do the shit out of that officer. Ricky Jackson. He spent over 39 years in prison for a murder he did not commit. Jackson was arrested at 18 years old, living in Cleveland, Ohio. The main witness, Wait. Jackson, was arrested at 18 years old. I'm sorry. He kind of looks like Eddie Murphy when he was young. Doesn't he look like a little bit like Eddie Murphy? All right, let's get back to it. Living in Cleveland, Ohio. The main witness in the case was a 12-year-old kid named Eddie Vernon, who in fact didn't see anything. And he said the police did pressure him into testifying against Jackson, which then later led to his conviction. Jackson initially was sent- Pressuring into someone. Uh, I'm becoming a broken record. You know what I'm going to say, but you know. That's how it is. When the police- have a massive heart on you, on you. They're gonna get you and make you say it or get somebody else to say it. Since to die in the electric chair. 18 but in the electric chair. After spending two years on death row, his death sentence was reduced to life in prison. Nearly four decades later, the now 52 year old Eddie Vernon came forward with the truth, stating that he never saw the murder happen. Charges against Jackson were then dropped, and after being wrongfully imprisoned for 39 years, this is the moment that Jackson hears that he is free to go. Mr. Jackson, you're going to be free to go. Life is filled with uh, small victories, and this is a big one. I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Jackson is now outside for the first time as a free man. Can you be, imagine him, imagine being him. You go into jail when you're 18, come out when you're like, what, in your mid 30s, 40s, 45, come out to a different world. It's all so confusing. There's more technology. It's like that guy from Shawshank Redemption, where he came out, like everything was different and like, it was so weird. I think there was a documentary also, like where they interviewed this one guy who got out of jail after many years, and the weirdest thing he saw is like, there's people everywhere with electronics talking on their phone, and they go like, "What the hell happened to this world? Like, there's billboards everywhere. Everybody's talking into their head. It's so confusing. It's just a magnificent documentary to watch." Jackson received I don't remember the name of it, but I got a look for it. from the state and an additional 2.65 million for lost income. 
2.65 million. This is Kirsten Lobato. She served 16 years in prison for a murder she did not commit. At 18 years old, she was charged with the brutal murder of a homeless man in Las Vegas. She was first convicted of first degree murder, but on a retrial, she was convicted on the lesser charges of voluntary manslaughter and sentenced to 13 to 45 years. And after spending 16 years behind bars, a new hearing was presented with evidence that confirmed the actual day of the victim's death was when Lobato was three hours away with her family, proving so that she Lobato had an alibi. could not have possibly committed these crimes. This is Lobato outside for the first time as a free woman. I feel overwhelmed, I feel excited, I feel grateful, I'm just, I'm so happy. Lobato has filed a lawsuit against the Las Vegas Police Department and her compensation claim is ongoing. Okay, well we got Let's go, go to have a burger. Like you have some shit food in the jail. Yeah. So th that was a seven reactions of innocent combat set free. But again, like I said, it's horrible how Wild West the police system is and was, well kinda is like let, let's not beat around the bush. There's some people that are it still happens today. Even though you have body cameras, like you hide the body cameras and like people are recording everywhere. Cause you can get it. It's like police can get away with murder now. It's like on camera because everybody has a phone. It depends on the situation. I'm getting way too political on this. Let's not go there. <laughs> but anyways, that's a great video from Courtroom. Top 7 Reaction of Innocent Conference is free. Great video to watch. And until the next time, human or nation, human or freak out. Bye. Pasito a pasito, suave suavecito, nos vamos pegando.